This is a fairly common question on college entrance tests and uh, various Olympiads. Uh, we are given a function fx equals x squared minus 3. Uh, we're given a restriction on the domain x greater than or equal to 0 for reasons I'll explain in a second. Um, we're asked to find when the inverse of the function equals the function. Now there are two ways of doing this. One way is uh, the traditional way where you find the inverse and then you equate the inverse to the function and solve, and we will do that first. Um, it's a little bit tricky, but it does get the right answer. Uh, and the second way is so simple that you don't even need to find the inverse. Um, but first of all, let's do the traditional way. Now, why is the restriction on the domain x greater than or equals to 0? Well, here is the um, chart of uh, fx equals x squared minus 3. And you can see that if we don't have the restriction on the domain, i.e. only the blue part of the curve, then we would not be able to get an inverse because if we apply the horizontal test here, uh, there would be two solutions if we have both uh, edges of the both curves, uh, whereas if we restrict it to x greater than zero, there's only one, and therefore we can have a one-to-one -one mapping and an inverse. Okay, so given the domain restriction, let's have a look at what the inverse is. So we know that uh, y equals x squared minus three, and to find the inverse, we simply flip y and x, and then we make y the subject of the equation, i.e. y is uh, x plus three, the square root. And so that is the inverse. Um, so that's the inverse, whoops, sorry, excuse me, that is the inverse, and of course we have the function we know is uh, x squared minus 3. So all we need to do now, we're using the traditional method, and again I will show the, uh, uh, the much simpler method in a minute, is we would say, okay, so we let uh, f minus 1 x equal fx and we solve, i.e. the square root of x plus 3 equals x squared minus 3. Now to solve this, we're going to have to square both sides, which is going to introduce some false solutions. But anyway, here we go. So that's uh, x plus 3 equals x squared minus 3 squared, which is x to the 4 minus 6x squared add 9, i.e. we have a quartic here, x to the 4 minus 6x squared, uh, uh, sorry, minus x add 6 equals 0. And we have to solve this quartic. Um, now, fortunately, if we put in 1 by inspection, 1, take away 6, take away 1, add 6, we get 0. So therefore, we know that x minus 1 is a factor of this. And then when we take that uh, x minus 1 out, we will get x cubed, add x squared, minus 5x, minus 6, equals 0. And fortunately, again, if we look at this and sub minus 2, we can see that's minus 8, add 4, add 10, minus 6. So we also know that minus 2 is a solution, so we can take that out as a factor as well. And that gives us x minus 1, x plus 2, and when we factorise that, that gives us x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. And now to find the final two solutions, uh, we can just uh, solve this using the quadratic formula, i.e. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2, or 1 plus or minus root 13 over 2. Okay, now in actual fact, three of these solutions uh, are invalid. So let's just have a quick look why they're invalid. Um, we've already got the restriction uh, that x is greater than or equal to 0. And so therefore, we know that uh, x equals minus 2 can't be a solution. And we also know that 1 minus root 13 over 2 can't be a solution. Uh, in actual fact, x equals 1 can't be a solution either, because if we look here, x equals 1, that would give minus 2, and the square root would have to be negative, um, which um, obviously we can't have. Uh, and so therefore the solution is x equals 1 plus root 13 over 2. So we have found the answer, okay, um, but it was a little bit difficult and we had to solve a quartic. There is a simpler way, a uh, much simpler way in fact. If we simply draw the line y equals x on our original graph here, and we remember that an inverse function is simply the mirror in the line y equals x, then we know that any inverse function, which let's just draw that maybe in green, the inverse function. Uh, if we draw the inverse function here in green, it's going to be something along the lines of this, And we know that the inverse function is going, to crop, is going to cross the actual function in the line y equals x. 
And so therefore, we don't even need to know what the inverse function is. All we need to do is solve the equation f of x equals x, i.e. where f of x crosses the line y equals x. Now, to do that is very simple. We have f of x equals x squared minus 3. And so all we need to do is put x squared minus 3 equal to x, i.e. where this function f of x crosses y equals x, which we know is where the inverse would also cross, giving us x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0, which we have already solved here. And the answer, therefore, is x equals 1 plus root 13 over 2. We haven't even needed to find the inverse. So it's a very good method for, um, uh, for solving these uh, inverse equals the function um, without actually having to bother finding the inverse. Okay, uh, anybody who's interested in, uh, in more of these videos, please uh, subscribe to the Gresty Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.